Good evening again, folks, and welcome to another installment of The Daily Wiretap, this time for the evening of April 24th, 2017. As always, The Daily Wiretap takes a look at the biggest stories in the world of Nintendo and wraps it up in a nice, neat little package so you don't have to. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First up tonight, the NES Classic Edition sells out instantly during the Best Buy restock. This morning has come and gone today, and with it, the small quantity of NES Classic Editions available at Best Buys across the nation. From South Philly to Chicago to Chula Vista, reports have come in stating the exact same thing. The retro mini machines sold out instantly. Stock numbers varied from store to store, averaging anywhere between 11 to 20, and some locations didn't even have any. Lines of tired and anxious Nintendo fans have already formed by the time Best Buy's doors opened, with only some customers aware of stock numbers due to signs posted and or tickets handed out in line. In other words, unless people had the extra time to camp out in the wee hours of the morning on a Monday no less, you would be completely out of luck. Honestly, in my personal opinion, I feel Nintendo really dropped the ball on this one and disappointed a lot of classic fans, and the overall price of these things have skyrocketed on eBay, and you know that at least a few scalpers were the ones in line this morning picking up the last of these units. Nintendo has created something yet again that people want and they're not producing. We saw this with Amiibo initially, they seem to fix their act with that, but again we're having the same kind of issues with Amiibo as well, and that's honestly all I can really say on it. It's it's sad. I'm happy that I got mine, but I know so many of my friends who wanted one and never had the opportunity. So here's hoping Nintendo makes this right sometime in the near future. Coming up next today, we have Bandai releasing life-sized Pokeballs that can be holstered and hold breath mints. You heard that right. If you are a Pokemon fan, you know that Pokemon merchandise can range anywhere from incredibly cute to incredibly bizarre, and today's announcement from Bandai very much falls into that latter category. You'll be able to pick up your batch of Pokeballs and holster them to your belt. Rather than hold a Gloom or a Garbodor, the various Pokeballs are designed to hold something decidedly less smelly, breath mints. A set of 11 will cost about 7,000 yen, or about 63 bucks, with six included clips to let you hook them onto your belt. The Japanese release is set for this September. No word yet if these things are going to be localized anytime soon, but stay tuned to Nintendo Wire for more details as we get them. We have our fingers crossed on these. And finally this evening, a fan recreates Breath of the Wild's 8-bit engine. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has had some crazy development cycles as outlined during the 2017 Game Developers Conference. The open world game that we all know and love went through quite a transformation from its original concept to the finished product, and many of the game's mechanics involving physics, enemy interaction, and world exploration were conceptualized using a classic 8-bit engine. While several screenshots and videos of this 8-bit inspired engine were shared during the GDC 2017, Zelda fans were eager for more so the folks at Micropig Gaming decided to answer the call with Breath of the NES. Breath of the NES aims to recreate what was shared by the Breath of the Wild development team, including the ability to seamlessly interact with your surroundings in a nostalgic 8-bit setting. For those hoping to try this for themselves, you can find a link in the full article that we'll have linked in the description below. I've personally spent some time playing the game and was able to harvest apples to heal, set my wooden sword on fire, which in turn burned down an entire wooded area, and equip a Korok leaf to blow fruit from trees. Overall, it's a cool little experiment that's definitely worth any Zelda fan's time. We recommend that you act fast if you wish to try it out yourself, as Nintendo has never been too fond of fan creations that infringe on their IPs, and we wouldn't be be surprised if they see a season and desist letter sometime in the very near future. And that's going to wrap up another installment of the Daily Wiretap for the evening of April 24th, 2017. As always, you can find a link to the full written article down in the description below. And head to NintendoWire.com for even more amazing Nintendo news. If you're looking for even more video content, we have a bunch of new stuff that we've put out over the past week. You can click on the annotations on the screen right now and be transported off to one of those videos. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.